me? Can I be sweet? Can I be your forever and be? Can we do a life together? You are my one. Welcome to the Tokakachi Show. I am presenting to you. Bulgaria and Romania, the Black Sea, that's like paradise. I was not, I was uncharted at the time because of the wall still up there and it was like all considered communist in a way. So I was eight when I went to Bulgaria and I was like almost, I think three when I was, not nine, was I nine? I think eight, nine. Three when I went, I remember I was three when I went to Romania. I already did swim. Uh, she took good care of that, my stepmother, mother. And but I remember uh, Romania very austere, the beach, like very wide open, and the buildings like modern in a way, like 60s buildings. And I don't like it. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm like more romantic. Yeah, you, in certain beaches you can get in like large hotels, but yeah, okay, you can bear it. But it's not my favorite place to be at all. I've done that a few times. So, but in Bulgaria, well, that was privileged because it was so simple. Little, little chossas, no, little bungalows, everything like white and kalk. I don't even know if this is English. Yes, so. Just like Mediterranean style. Just like in Greece, just like in Yugoslavia, just like in Italy, I don't know, Spain. Mediterranean. Little simple spaces. I remember I, I remember I was running around with other kids around those all day long. Took a sailing lesson. And well, that must have been the ocean. I picked up the um, amber colored crystals out of the water. I had them in my jar for years. I loved them. I think because the second time I didn't like them as much. I thought they're nice too in Yugoslavia. These were like the white ones or transparent ones. I also had a collection with uh, little coins from different countries, a lot of them, before the Euro. I cherish those things. Yeah, because those things you can keep and look at them, books you read and then you give them off. Food had been a very great highlight in my life. I once I went to this restaurant in Mexico City. I went to a few over the years, called Mediterranean. And I had like this brunch on Sunday. I only went once. It had like different plates, like Mediterranean French cuisine. That was so amazing. I even had a weird dish, which I usually would not eat. I don't really want to say it. But I remember tongue. I, I, I don't want to eat that, sorry. <laughs> It's just the preparation, everything was so... I like this Mediterranean style so much because it's basically nothing. Have a table, put a white cloth on top and eat. Just like, what's his name, Pascal, the restaurant Chez Pascal had. And maybe a few art pieces on the wall. Just simple. I like it that way. I like other things. I like like the Argentinian place, which had like... But if it comes to kitsch, I can't handle it. Just, you know, some big uh, oven outdoors, a patio with cobblestone or something. Rustic. Oh, once I ate, I already said that once, I ate at the, yeah, food is really important. Mexicans are good in preparing food. It was a place in Veracruz, which is not that touristy. And it was a place like on the beach and it was like a chosa, a, like palapa actually. I had a roof made of palm trees and so. And well, they have a few things and I had empapelado, which is like, oof, it's amazing. It's like a piece of fish, maybe. I don't know which fish it is. And you fill it with, you know, herbs and spices and, you know, onions and let it all boil down in its own in its own brine. And it's usually wrapped in, in plantain, platano leaves. A substitute, they use aloe foil, but they're, I don't think they did that. Platano leaves. It's an amazing dish. And since there was, those were not touristy, I mean, at the time, it wasn't expensive either, which was kind of cool. These are like the more independent things I did. I didn't need anybody who actually, you know, get me there. <laughs> I was always poor. Again, someone says, I'm so lonely, come Silkita, let's eat there. No, that wasn't a Silkita guy, the military. Obviously, what chopper idiot. 
how to say no <laughs> to get food. Hello, how to say no for food. But the cheaper places I have, I could do like with people who could maybe become friends or so. And because one could afford it all by themselves. That was good. Okay, now here's one of the most amazing events I have to say. But it's not nothing new, I have said it before. So when I got my first car, because Siemens, I had my... The first thing I did, of course, went to a trip, Popocatépetl. I went on a trip in my first little car, used car. And then I went to... Wait, that wasn't a car trip. That was a bus trip before that. So <clears throat> I went with, you know, poor neighborhood, not cheap, coca, ugly, but he was like versatile. He knew how to do stuff. And it was... So we went to the warmth from Mexico City in bus. And the, but that means actually Cuernavaca, but not exactly stay there. Go a little bit further, which I don't remember how it's called. Where the, where the people, like the people do their little water experience in the river, which is like freezing cold. So we did that, but it takes a long time to even get there from the city. It's not it, in bus. That's it's just quite a, an adventure. We get it's a lot. It's a lot. So it was evening, and it was time to go back, and he kind of said, "Wait, sit here for a moment." And then he, he went and he came back after a few, five minutes or so. Said, okay, it's all done. Well, it's all said. That's, that's coca. It's all said. Okay. And then after a while, someone says, oh, ready to go. Or, or maybe he said like, Whoosh. so coca arranged that we could overnight in a place where like nothing was there, like a little village. He had that verb. He had that speech. He would go, he arranged that someone would actually give us his chosa, I, it's a, not a bungalow. It's like made out of palm. Uh, I don't know. I, the simplest thing you can probably imagine. Sweep that little room out for us. It had romantically a mosquito net on top, which is not romantic because it's just against mosquito, but it is. I have it all clean, changed the sheets, and rented his very low, own house, room, whatever, small thing to us overnight, to be stood there, could stay there. It was like amazing that even Coca came up with those things. He had those, he would just come up with those things all the time. Initiative and so there it is. So we didn't have to go all the way to the stinking city that day. And now I woke up with, <laughs> with the sound of a donkey. <laughs> oh, oh. Or was it, was it actually a little... I think it was a donkey. Whatever. Nature's calling. You know how those smells, these, these little villages? How they smell? <gasps> because they don't have really stoves. They do everything on wood stove. Which brings me to the subject of when I went to Paracho. A tiny little thing in, in Morelia. No, in Michoacan. Sorry, Morelia. In Michoacan. On an evening, kind of cold up there. You enter this town and it smells the wood stove. And of course, nothing is commercialized there. When you have a taco, tortilla, it's made by hand. It's amazing. Well, these are excitements in my life. I was always like out of this world. Oh, I love 